I am, I am proud to be an American. I love our heritage. I am worried about the direction our nation is headed. I'm very worried about it. Um, and I tell you what, if we don't do what we're supposed to do, it's just going to get worse and worse. I want the adults to listen this morning. Now, this is not a typical Sunday morning type message. I was taught that uh, as a pastor, your Sunday morning messages should be uh, the ones that are uplifting and encouraging people and your kind of your milk and honey uh, kind of message. And then your uh, Wednesday night was to be more of like a Bible study type uh, message. And then your Sunday night, that's the night that, uh, that's the time where you, you did any skinning. If there was anything need to be dealt with, that's when you did that on your Sunday night. Well, this could be considered by some as a Sunday night style message, although the intent is not to do any skinning or, or hide busting. It's just to, to tell truth. Now, I need you adults to listen because we are the example for this next generation. And young people, I want you to do me a favor and listen very intently. Everybody looking up here. Everybody looking up here, please. Thank you so much. Young people, won't you do me a favor and listen on purpose, all right? Because you are the future of this nation. And our, our hopes for this nation, in a large degree, is on your shoulders, okay? I know there's a lot of pressure there. But I need you to listen. And adults, once again, I need you to listen because we, we set the example. Um, look, we, we all hope that the next generation will take the torch and go further, don't we? I hope that my children will. I hope that my children will serve God and be closer to God than I ever was or have been. I hope that they will. However, that's usually not how it works. Okay? On a grander scale, there, there usually is that, that select few that will take the torch and run further than the predecessors. But most often, parents, here's what happens. If, if I draw my lines right here and I live life at this degree, most often our children will live life at this degree right here. And if this is your, uh, uh, your children's standard of living and their service for the Lord or whatever, then your grandchildren most often will end up living life at this degree. And that's why it's so important that we as parents, we as adults, we, we live for the Lord, we almost overkill. And we set our standard high, but knowing that, well, those coming after me, they're probably going to be just a little bit down from where I was. They're probably not going to take that torch and go further. And you can see that. Uh, just, look, just look at what America was in the 40s, 50s, and even earlier, and look at what it is now, and you can see that. In 1 Corinthians 14... Paul is writing the Corinthian church and he, he's talking to them about the spiritual gifts and, and the speaking in tongues and, and things like that. And, and uh, Pastor, do you believe in spiritual gifts? Well, I believe they're right there in that Bible. It's hard to argue with the Bible. And I believe that God can still use these spiritual gifts. I always believe it's for the purpose of not to glorify self but to win somebody to Christ. I do believe that and to spread the word. And at the end, in verse 40, as he's telling them, look, here's what they're doing. They're just doing it willy-nilly, man. I mean, they, they have some gift, and it's all about them, and they're, they're doing it just one after another, and it's kind of the service. There's, there's no order to it. There's, uh, everybody's just doing things. Uh, uh, they're, well, they're being very inappropriate in the way they do things, the Corinthian church. And in verse number 40, he, he comes closing to the end here. In 1 Corinthians 14, 40, he says this, Let all things be done decently, and in order. Now, of course, he's talking about the spiritual gifts here and the, the true use of these spiritual gifts, but he says there that when it comes to decency and order, he says, let all things be done decently and in order. All areas of life. Listen, we as Christians in this world, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. We are the decency of the world. Now, it doesn't mean we're any better than anybody else. Uh, look, I'm no better than the drunk out there. 
But I'm a child of God, so that makes me better than the drunkenness, that sin. Do you understand what I'm saying there? I, I, I don't need to stoop to those things, any of those sins, to lie and gossip, pride, all those things. And, and Well, preacher, nobody's perfect. Right, I understand that. But I can't use that as a crutch. And, and he says right here, let, let all things be done decently and in order. I want to talk to you today, this morning about whatever happened to decency. I'm not just talking about good common decency. Now, here's where the problem is when we talk about common decency. What is considered common decency today is not what was common decency 20 years ago. And it's not what common decency was 40 years ago. It seems that America, and Christians in particular, we join in with the world and we sink to the lowest common denominator and we become like the world, uh, 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 like the world was 10 years ago and think, well, we're okay because we're not where the world is right now. And because of that, our moral compass is way out of whack. Listen, immorality is worse now than it's ever been. Decency is at an all-time low. And look, you, you look to our leaders. Oh, look, look, I, there was an email sent out a while back. I did some study to see if it were true, and it appears that it was. I forget the name, and I don't have it written down, uh, Blue Capital or something like that. Some news site that public, uh, sent out this email, or not this email, this report. But listen to what it said about Congress. Uh, at that time, now this has been a few years back, 29 members of Congress have been accused of spousal abuse. Seven have been arrested for fraud. 19 have been accused of writing bad checks. 117 have bankrupted at least two businesses. Three have, refu uh, have been arrested for assault. 71 have credit reports so bad that they can't qualify for a credit card. Fourteen have been arrested on drug-related charges. Eight have been arrested for shoplifting. Twenty-one are current defendants in lawsuits. And in 90, 1998 alone, 84 congressmen in 1998, 84 congressmen were stopped for drunk driving but released after they claimed congressional immunity. That's our Congress. A bunch of thugs. I mean, they have rap sheets. In, in other words, there's no decency there. And if our leadership, and when I say leadership, I'm not just blaming it on Congress. I'm talking about leadership in the church. I'm talking about leadership in the home. If leadership does not have any decency, well, look, you can be sure shooting that those, the fellowship is not going to have decency as well. At present, right now, there's still Congress, those in Congress with records that are less than desirable that have reports of uh, uh, barroom brawls, spousal abuse, and reportedly ties with organized crime. That's in our, our Congress now. Our leaders uh, uh, to say one thing while they do another. Don't they, our political leaders? But it's not just our political leaders. It's the leaders in the home as well. We tell our children, don't do this while we do it. Or do this while we don't do it. I, I, I read a church sign recently. It said, parents, don't send your children to church. Bring them. All right. Why? Because if we say, don't, hey, do as I say, not as I do. Hey, that carries no weight. They're going to end up doing as we do, maybe even worse. These, our leaders seem to say, trust us. And then they do as they please with little regard to the Constitution, the law, or their own word. There was a day and hour when certain words were not allowed to be said on television. You know why? They were considered indecent. Well, that's just not decent to say that word. But now they can say them, and the few restrictions there are on television, what you can't say, there's a strong push to do away even with those uh, under the, the auspices of freedom of speech with absolutely no regard just decency. At one time, I remember watching a Vic Van Dyke show. Anybody remember that show? Or, or I Love Lucy. Remember I Love Lucy? And remember the bedroom scenes? Oh, bedroom scenes. Look, husband and wife were always depicted in two separate beds. Now, why was that? Would it have been a sin for them to be in the same bed? No, husband and wife. But it wasn't decent. Oh, but now you turn on a television show, and oh my goodness, you better turn it off, because everything is happening. 
There was something then known as common decency, but not now. When the Beatles came to America, there was an uproar amongst preachers preaching against the Beatles because they were singing songs like, I want to hold your hand. (gasps) They're wicked. Oh, but listen, the songs now. Hey, look, it's more than I want to hold your hand, and it's outright in your face. And it's not just, and some of you think, yeah, that rap music. And that it, boy, I tell you, I, I hate being at a gas station. Somebody comes up, and, and they, they uh, are playing some of that rap music, and you hear all this foul language. Hey, come on, you know, I'm not saying anything you don't know. All the foul language. Now, now look, reason with me for just a minute. Is that decent? The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. And I know, look, I know uh, us old people. Now I'm 44, some of the kids say I'm old. I'll show you old right there. Us old people, of course, we're going to say, yeah, yeah. But listen, young people, just think about it. I mean, just be honest. Just be honest with me. That music that's talking about everything you know is against this book right here. I mean, just think about it. In my day, the preachers preached, they'd have to play the records backwards so you could hear the, the, the uh, uh, hidden messages. But you don't have to play them backwards and the messages aren't hidden. I mean, they're out and out. Whatever happened to decency? Whatever happened to it? One lady said this, young people are moving away from feeling guilty about sleeping with somebody to feeling guilty if they are not sleeping with someone. That's where our society has come to. There was a day and hour when, when if an unwed couple was found out that they were living in sin, they were embarrassed, they felt guilty about that because it just wasn't a decent thing. But now our young people, they feel guilty if they're not partaking in that kind of lifestyle. Whatever happened to decency? Well, where's it coming from? Listen, we're, we're dropping our standards, folks. I mean, we're dropping our, our, our standard of living. L- listen to the difference here. When, when George Washington, he's only 16 years old, he, he copied a, a, a 110 rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversation. Courtesy was that type of behavior that was to be demonstrated in court, the royal court. That courtesy, common courtesy. Washington, it was his desire to free America from the court's control and yet maintain the manner in which one treated others while there. One said about these manners here that he wrote down, that George Washington wrote down, the rules have in in common a focus on other people rather than the narrow focus of our own self-interest that we find so prevalent today. You want me to tell you why there's a problem with decency? Decency focuses on others while uh, indecency focuses on self. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it, and it doesn't bother me, and if I want to do it, I can do it. We're all seeking our self-interest, and because we seek our self-interest, decency is out the door. Hey, listen to just a few of these uh, 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 rules and of civility and decent behavior, he wrote down. I'll try to read just a few. It says, uh, every action done in company ought to be with some sign of respect to those that are present. Respect to others. But you don't see that much anymore. Hey, how about this one? Put not off your clothes in the presence of others, nor go out of your chamber half-dressed. Oh, well, that's old-fashioned. No, it's decent. It's decency. Be not hasty to believe flying reports to the disparagement of any. In other words, don't listen to gossip. Uh, let's see here. If I, oh, how about this? Play not the peacock looking everywhere about you to see if you be well decked, if your shoes fit well, if your stockings sit neatly, neatly and clothes handsomely. He said, don't be so caught up. Hey, you fix yourself, then forget yourself. Don't be so caught up with, oh, uh, don't touch me. You might wrinkle my shirt. Oh, my goodness. Go prance somewhere else. How about this one? Drink not nor talk with your mouth full, praise the Lord. Neither gaze about while you are drinking. 
So just common decency. Hey, don't talk with your mouth full. There's one in here about uh, that he wrote down about when you're talking to somebody, don't get up in their face. Don't you hate a close talker? Don't you? Oh, man, when somebody comes to you and they're like, hey, brother, how are you? <laughs> hey, man. And here's the thing. They get right up there. I mean, about headbutt you. And, and you step back, and they step forward. And you step back, and they step forward. They go to shake your hand. You stick your hand way out here. Shake my hand, and they pull you in. <laughs> hey, brother. And with me, it's always somebody that just ate something at Pizza Village. <laughs> and they love them red onions on their pizza. Hey, it, just decency. And we would read these, these things, and there's 110 of them. You ought to look them up. Talk about not spitting in front of people. I mean, just things that we think, oh, well, that's old school. Hey, there was nothing wrong with it. It, it's decency. It's, it's showing respect for each other. But we don't see that in our society. What a far cry our society is from what it used to be. But, but preacher, that's the old-fashioned way. What made it wrong? Nothing. There's nothing made it wrong. Whatever happened to honesty? It's just decent. I mean, it's a sin to lie, but even if it wasn't, it's just decent to tell the truth. 2 Corinthians 8, 21, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Honesty, not just with God, but with each other, with men as well. This, this little white lie stuff. Hey, no such thing. A lie is a lie. No matter how small it is, it's a lie. Just be honest. I remember... Uh, me and my mom were at my neighbor's house when I was just a kid, and some uh, uh, older teenage boy knocked on the back door. He was wanting the, the other teenage boy that lived there, and, and uh, that teenage boy's name was Ray that lived there, and he said, tell him I'm not home. So I answered the back door, and he said, hey, is Ray here? And I said, he told me to tell you he's not home. I could hear Ray in the background. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, yeah, I wasn't going to lie for him. I read some statistics from a survey done. Per percent of women, listen, percent of women who admit to occasionally telling harmless half truths. Eighty percent. Now look, decency tells me there's no such thing as a half truth. A half truth is a whole lie. Listen to this: average number of lies per day by men to their partner. Uh, boss or colleagues, six lies a day. Average number of uh, lies by ladies to their partner, boss, or colleagues, three a day. That's just the ones they admitted. They're probably lying about those numbers. It says provide for things honest. In other words, speak the truth. It's only decent. Hey, young person. Mom or dad says, where have you been? What were you doing? And you know if I give them the truth, I'm going to get in trouble. Tell them the truth anyways. Take your medicine. Take the punishment. Tell them the truth. But don't lose the integrity by telling a lie. Be honest. And by the way, if you don't want to hear the truth, don't ask the question. Don't ask. I, I, I don't ask my wife, am I starting to look fat? I don't ask her. Why? Because if she says, no, I'm going to be mad. I'm not going to put her in that. Or if she says, yes, I'll be mad. <laughs> I'm trying to beef up. No. Look, no, if you can't take the truth, don't ask. But if you ask the question, then expect the truth, want the truth. I have men who say to me, preacher, I, they talk to you something. I don't know exactly how to say it. And I say, just say it. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'll be, I'm a big boy. I wear big boy pants. Just, to, just say it. My wife has said to me before, hey, can I talk to you about something without hurting your feelings? And I'll say, probably not. But go ahead and tell me anyway. I'm a big boy. My feelings will be okay. Don't worry about it. Just tell me. I want to know. And then she tells me. I think, why did you tell me that? <laughs> be honest. Be honest. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. There's no room for lying. 
How about work? Just the work ethic. You know Romans 12, 11 says not slothful in business. Being a hard worker, Proverbs 13, 4 says, The soul of the slugger desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The one who's diligent, the hard worker, God says, I'll bless you. Hey, well, you know, I'm just waiting for God to take care of me. God's not going to take care of me if you're not being a good steward. Okay? He has not obligated himself to take care of the lazy person. He has obligated himself to take care of the child of God who will get out there that's not afraid to sweat and do some work and earn their keep. If you Now, look, there's some that can't work. I'm not talking about you. I know about the ones that can get out there and work. Hey, be a hard worker. We have a society that's come to expect entitlements without doing the work that would entitle them to anything. Well, I, do, I think I've earned something. Not if you haven't got out there and worked for it. We have a society in which people do not want to do what they're paid to do, and if they finally do it, they complain about it the whole time. You, you just won't believe what my boss made me do. Well, wait, was he paying you to do it? Yeah, then you ought not complain. Well, I don't think, I think I should get paid for more than that. Hey, look, if you don't like it, find another job. Well, I'm not qualified for another job. Then shut your mouth. Get qualified, get another job. Hey, work hard. I, I'm, folks, I'm sorry. That's just a decent thing, is it not? Am I off here? And just to work. Just to work. The average worker admits to wasting three hours per eight-hour workday. Listen to this. Of those surveyed between 18 and 24 years old, 39% of them said they would consider working if, uh, would consider quitting their job if Facebook was banned during working hours. 39%? Well, if they say, I can't be on Facebook during working hours, then I'll quit. Right then, I would ban Facebook. 60% of online purchases are made during work, regular working hours. I could go on and on with those statistics. People just sit around surfing the web when they ought to be working. Hey, I, oh, I think I don't have my phone. I, I think the cell phone w had to be one of the devil's greatest inventions. You, you can't, you ride by somebody that's supposed to be working, you'll see it all the time on the cell phone. Texting, looking up stuff, playing games. Oh, you got to get this game. You've been playing it all day. Look, now there's, folks, there's nothing decent about that. Be honest. Be a hard worker. 1 Timothy 2.9 says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or pearls or, or gold or pearls or costly array. Modesty. It's just, it's just common decency. Here's a definition I found of modesty. I, I, I just Google search modesty to see what definition I got. First one, Wikipedia, it says this. Modesty is a mode of dress and deportment intended not to encourage sexual attraction in others. Oh, well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, that, that just talking about the ladies there. Yeah, preacher, you tell them ladies. No, let's see, the priest in, in Exodus 28, 4, it says, And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness uh, from their loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. The priests were to wear breeches so that under the robe so that when they went up to the tabernacle or to the, to the altar, they would be modest keeping the body covered. In our present society, you can't drive down the road or walk through the store without seeing somebody's underclothes. That just burns me up. Now, look, the thing is, they may be covered. You could say that it's modest, I guess, but it sure ain't decent. Hey, guys, pl hey, do me a favor, guys. Please don't walk down the, the, the road with your britches way down here where just to keep them up you got to walk like a penguin what is cool about that I, 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 hey that's cool to droop your pants how is that cool hey man what's up look and we laugh about it it's just not decent 
Well, why, why should I have to pull my britches up? That's old school. No, it's just decent's what it is. You can't hardly drive down the road or walk through a store without, hey, man, you may or may not agree with me, without having to look down at the floor. Because women are hanging out all over the place. And their body parts showing that it's not meant for anybody to see other than their spouse. They're just modesty, just covering up. Well, they should not look at me and have those thoughts. Goodness. Look, if, if I'm riding down the road and I see a sign that says yard sale, you know what I do? I look over in the yard. There have been times I rode down, there wasn't a sign there, but people had a bunch of stuff out in their yard. There wasn't a sale going on, but it sure looked like it. Uh hum, are you getting my drift? Trying to be real nice here. Just saying, yeah, because you're a man and I'm talking to the women. <laughs> now look, if a man looks on a woman to lust after her, that's what Jesus said, then he hath committed adultery with her in his heart. Well, preacher, it doesn't matter what you wear. Some beast out there, and you're right, some beast going to look and have the wrong thoughts. But if you're dressed modestly, that's on him. If you're dressed so as to attract that attention, that's on you. Look, give me some specifics. Now, I'm going to let you and the Holy Spirit work out some of those. I'm just asking, whatever happened to decency? Decency. Hey, parents, if your children have a Facebook account, Lord help me, I just don't know that's the wisest thing. But if they have one, you need to know the, the password. You need to look at the pictures they're posting. Of where they take, what is it with this duck face y'all do? They take self pictures with this, this duck face. Is that supposed to look pretty? I'm sorry, it don't. Oh, look, got one guy back there look, pointing at a girl. <laughs> Pictures of yourself wearing your bathing suit that ain't much bigger than this. Hey, some of you ladies, if you caught a man staring in your bedroom window and using your underclothes, you would freak out, wouldn't you? But it's okay to post post a picture or, or you know, walk around outside and that. Hey. hey, now look. I'm just talking about common decency. Well, preacher, I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, that's why decency went out the door. Because decency is not about you. It's about respect for the other person. And the Bible says, let all things, all things be done decently in order. Hey, I think in the home you ought to dress decently. I think you ought to. How about our speech? There's no way I'll cover every area here, okay? I'm just giving you a few, a sample, a sample platter here. Speech, Colossians 4, 6 says this, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how, to, how ye ought to answer every man. Our society has become vulgar in its speech. It has become very sharp and harsh and crass with the words we use. Whatever happened to please? Whatever happened to, to thank you? Whatever happened to asking somebody something? I remember my oldest son, Chad. He, he came to me one time, I don't know, about eight years old or so, and he, it was in the kitchen. I was uh, at the sink, and he, he held his glass up and said, give me some water. Give me some water. Well, I don't even tell my kids that. And under that, I'll say, hey, could you do this for me, please? Said, give me some water. I said, do what? He said, give me some water. He just wasn't thinking. I, I took his glass. I said, okay. Put about half full of water. And he's holding it. I said, you want me to give you some water? He said, yeah, give me some water. I went, boots, right in the face. <laughs> Man, that started a water fight that lasted for months. So you can ask for it kindly. Whatever happened to yes, sir, and yes, ma'am? No, sir, no, ma'am. Whatever happened to that? 
Nothing burns me up more than when an adult tells my children, don't say sir or ma'am to me. Hey, I taught them to do that. Hey, let them do that. Let them do it. Well, I want to be their buddy. Well, you can be their buddy. You can be their friend, but teach them to be decent. I'm, uh, try, try to show respect. Hey, young people, say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am to your teacher. Say it to your, to your parents. My dad is from Illinois, and uh, he married my mom. He's my stepdad, but I just call him my dad. He's the only one I've known. And um, he, he, when he moved out, I'd say, you know, we're in the South, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. I mean, I remember going to a three-year-old uh, Sunday school class. And my mom saying, now you say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to your teacher. And I went in there, and I was about three, maybe four. And the teacher asked me a question. I said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Didn't say when to say which one. I just want to make sure my bases were covered. So my dad married my mom, and I, he'd say something. I'd say, yes, sir. And he'd say, you don't say sir to me. I'd say, yes, sir. No, no, don't say sir to me. Okay, yes, sir. To this day, I call him sir. Why? It's respect. It's, it's honor. Young people treat the adults with respect, and uh, uh, adults allow them to, encourage them to. Hey, I even say it to my sons. They'll ask me a question. I'll say, yes, sir. Why? It's just decent. It's just decency in our speech. Speak with courtesy. Don't speak so crass. We use these these words that will say, well, that's not a cuss word, but it's a vulgar word. Hey, listen, my pastor, one time we was getting ready to have a homecoming and we were going to grill out some, some pork and have barbecue. And he said, bro, Ronnie, I want you to go down to the store. You're going to pick up some of these Boston butts. I was embarrassed. I, you know what I told him? I said, I need about so many of them Boston behinds, please. Brother Ronnie, you, your pastor, you're, you're kidding. No. Man, if I'd have said that other word that came after Boston around my mama, she'd have smacked my mouth. Well, that's silly. That's decency. If you look at the story of Daniel, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 20, here, here's the, the story. They, they're taken into Babylon captive. These four young men that had dedicated themselves to God. The king gives a eunuch that's over these men here, and they're to be trained, they're to be integrated into the society of the Babylonians. And they were bringing the food, and Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, no, we can't eat that. That's against the law of our God. We can't do it. Now, look, that could mean they'd just be killed. He said, just try, look, bring us pulse, sort of like a vegetable soup, I guess. Bring us this, and we'll eat this, and then see if, if we're doing fine. And, and he did, and, and, and man, the, the Lord blessed, and they looked healthier than anybody else. They started feeding everybody that. They came where they were to stand before the king. The king was to, to kind of inspect them and ask them questions and see their command of the language that they had learned and, and their knowledge and their wisdom. And the Bible says, and in all manner, matters, of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm here were four men that were taken out of captivity into a foreign land they stand before the king and the king asks them questions and he looks at their deportment the way they carried themselves and he he listens to their answers and he says man these guys right here are ten times up better they're above by ten times the others that are in our kingdom in wisdom and an understanding you no know, wisdom has to do with everyday living the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.15, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy. He's talking to us in all manner of conversation. Conversation is not two people talking here in the Bible. The way it's used here in the Bible is talking about in your daily living. To be holy as God is holy. Oh, Christians, I'm no better than the next guy except through Jesus Christ, but I ought to behave myself ten times better. Because I'm a child of God. 
I'm supposed to be holy as God is holy. I should carry myself in a manner that presents Christ. I should speak in a manner that represents Christ. I should clothe myself in a manner that represents Christ. I should work in a manner that represents Jesus Christ. It's just called being decent. Be holy. We're to be holy in our speech. We're to be holy in our appearance, our behavior, our living. Decency. It's a good thing. Involves respect. I, I, I'm appalled at the lack of respect in our nation. I'm appalled. I, I, I sometimes I get picked with. I call everybody either Mister or Brother. All, all guys, I call Mister or Brother. Just about everybody. Why do you do that? I, I'm just trying to be decent. I'm trying to show some respect. No, I don't have to. I know I don't have to, but. Just the way I was taught, you, you you call that older gentleman. I think um, I think it was Brother Swenson said to me, "How come you call uh, some people Mister, and you by their last name or brother and say their last name, and some will be by brother or Mister and their first name?" How, and I think my answer was, "Well, those who are older than me, I call by, by their last name. It's just to show respect." Those that are younger than me, my age and younger, I still want to show respect. I still call them by first name because we're kind of peers. But I want to say brother or mister just to show respect to them. It's just decency. It's just decency. Decency aids in the preservation of a nation. And our nation has become more and more indecent. And as the nation has become indecent, the church has followed suit. And if the salt loses its saltiness, how good is it? Remain decent. George, step up here a second. You've seen this illustration before. George is going to represent the world. He's a good likeness. And uh, we're going to use him to represent the wicked, sinful world, okay? I'm going to represent the church. There is to be... A distinct difference. Am I right? We're a, we're a peculiar people. He wants to purify into himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now the world is becoming more and more wicked. So George, take a step towards wickedness that way there. <clears throat> now here's what the church has done. As the world goes towards wickedness, the church will go towards wickedness and say, well, I'm still not as wicked as the world. So take another step. Take another step. Take another step. Now, now I'm where the world used to be. And I've drifted further from God. I'm further from holiness than I was. I'm still the same distance from the world. Oh, I'm still distinct from the world. But in, in trying to keep the same distinctness from the world, I've now lost my likeness of Christ. Let all things be done decently and in order. There's a certain element of pride and a certain element of heartbrokenness I find when somebody tells me, your boys are so respectful. I'm glad to hear that. Somebody recently said, I mean, they say yes, ma'am, and no, man, ma'am, to everything. They're so respectful. Here's what broke my heart. You just don't see and hear that anymore. It's a shame. The thing is, you don't hear it in the world because you, you don't hear it much in the church anymore. You don't hear it in the church anymore, listen, because you're not hearing it in the home anymore. Moms and dads, let all things be done decently and in order. Husbands and wives, all things decently and in order. Well, set the example for this next generation. Hey, young people, look at me for just a moment. I love this nation. And it's going downhill. We are losing religious freedoms. The, the hope of this nation is a good measure on your shoulders. And if we do not keep things decent, if we do not maintain that element of decency, teaching each other or treating each other with respect and honor and courtesy, just common decency, 
if we don't try to live holy as God is holy, let me, let me tell you something. The nation, the, the, the America you're growing up in will not be the America your, your children are growing up in, will grow up in. All things decently in order. Let me ask you something. How are you doing? Heads bowed and eyes closed, please.